telling me that they were gonna like call a raid from my house and just like kind of like drag me out with all my laptop equipment and cameras. You can take risks, or you can follow rules. I mean, with me, I, I take risks. You know? Meet Victor G. Thomas, a.k.a. Vic and Babes, an extreme urban photographer who takes pictures of extreme views that the normal eye wouldn't normally see. Exploring urban locations on the ground provide beautiful views of horizons and skylines, but by taking it to the extreme, Vic and other photographers capture stunning visuals of a similar world. This art can be very dangerous and often illegal. Vic shares his experience, his vision, and he sheds food for thought when it comes to the balance between the power of the law and the urge to create. Basically what I do before I go to any like rooftops or like tunnels, I basically like to get my mind together. So I like to spend time, I like to relax, you know, look at TV, eat some snacks, eat candy, just like do something where I feel like I'm like a regular human being and then I'll take myself into that zone. You know, I like to get myself a head start, you know, for my day. Uh, like you have to sort of like bring the mortal aspect into it to the point where like you can't be up there not focused you can't like you can't be in environments that are like unstable while preparation is key there is a reason why it's illegal there's a risk for every reward whether it be facing the authorities or dealing with your own mortality the last experience i had was, was when um well the most dangerous one i had was when i was, when I was on uh, the manhattan bridge in the storm I actually saw a cop car coming and then um, there was like a little hatch in the floor that was like maybe like a few meters from the ground to the floor to the water. Uh, I took a step back. When I took a step back, I fell through the, um, the hatch and my arms came out. So I was like basically dangling over the bridge and then I'm dangling over the bridge and I'm just looking down. And I'm not scared or anything. I'm just thinking to myself like, damn, I could have really died. Like, like if my arms were like this, I would have fell straight down and then hit the balcony and just like laid flat right there. But I was good. And then directly after that, I went to another building, after a bridge, and then, you know, I was in a better mind state, but I was still putting myself at risk, and it was in the storm. I wasn't afraid of getting caught. It was just more of, like, I was just trying to avoid it. You know, I was like, let me just step back so they can't see me, so I don't have to panic and run down in the storm, you know? Like, let me just, like, stay, you know, stay, you know, stay to myself. But, like, it just, I moved back, and that kind of took me out of focus, because I was focusing on that, you know? When I'm all the way up there, they can't see me. So I stood back and just fell through the hole, and then my arms came out. Since that one bridge incident, I've been like hyper aware. So that means that like every time I step outside, I'm always alert with the cars. Like I can like hear things without even like knowing that they're like near me. You know, like it's like when I hear it vocally or like, you know, then like for some reason my body maneuvers in certain ways to just kind of like stop it instantly. Like if I, if something's coming close to me, I just stop on the, on, the, on the dime, you know, like I make sure I'm really in tune with my surroundings. Vic's experience with danger was to prevent the authorities. And somehow his experiences with law enforcement are not how you would expect. My most recent experience with authorities, um, basically they had um, video of me going into a building and they were allegedly saying that I stole a few laptops, which I didn't. And that was the only issue that I, like, that I have with it, is that they were saying that I stole laptops. So basically, um, they called me in, they called me in for like a mini interrogation, you know, asking me some questions. They found out that I didn't do it, you know, but they just wanted to get some information from me and they wanted to show me pictures and they wanted to show me that they're watching me. I'm already aware of it. I mean, it's on Instagram, it's internet, you know, so like, of course, I know everyone can see me as an algorithm for this. But, um, you know, yeah, you know, so basically, um, you know, they, they just wanted to call me in and just let me know that, you know, that, that, that they thought I was the one that was going to, like, I get, like, they, they wanted to figure out to see if I was the one who stole the laptops from the building, you know? And then they were telling me that they were going to, like, call a raid from my house and just, like, kind of, like, drag me out with all my laptop equipment and cameras. But, I mean, that was the craziest experience, basically, like, having me inside of, like, an interrogation room and then going from there. But, I mean, I came, I came out okay, you know? Like, like, for some reason, whenever I get with the authorities, like, for some reason, my work kind of overlaps what I'm doing. It, it like, kind of overlaps, like illegal like you know activity like they look at it and they say damn like you know he's making like remarkable work so like why would we want to like you know like stop that like just be safe and they always offer suggestions to sort of say okay like you know can we find your way where you can continue doing it like i, I guess doing this on like a legal level so i mean I, I i found ways to do it legally you know but i also like to take it in some own hands at times so the best permit to get us to like either like dm buildings because buildings are like you know trying to get on the social media now too they're trying to get a presence 
So what you can do is, since you're already going buildings and you're a photographer, what you can do is you can contact them and you can say, hey, can I exchange you some photos for like, you know, some time on your roof? And they'll do that. And then they'll allow you to go up there for free legally and then you can get some shots. And then they'll have the images for like Instagram and then it works hand in hand. The first, the first aftermath experience when I first got caught or just experience in urban exploring in general, I was like, okay, I'm going to continue because it's something that's brand new. And I can also see the opportunities that I can get me, you know, it's like the adrenaline, the opportunities and the friends I can make. Yeah, that, that's basically the main reason why I stuck to it, you know, like the authorities were cool. I'm like, I can get arrested doing anything, you know, I can be walking down a block and a cop can say, hey, come here, you got a ticket. I mean, it happened. Like, it all depends on how I move too. like, you know, like when I'm in my environments, when I'm urban exploring, I like to like basically like, you know, change my movements, like, you know, change the way I move and like make sure what I'm doing is like on a level where I'm not harming anyone. And I'm just like pretty much like, you know, I'm trying to relish the location and give people the best you know, like visual experience of what I'm experiencing. While extreme urban exploration photography does push barriers, whether it be mentally or physically, Vic talks about pushing those barriers in a creative way. I'm trying to influence people and show them that there are different ways to be creative, that there are different ways to just like put together an artistic scheme and, and not like do it by a certain rule. Like there's always other ways to do it, but you can take risks or you can follow rules. I mean, with me, I, like, I take risks, you know, and people like to go based off shock, I guess shock factor with me, but I, I break it down to like shock factor and I, and I break it down to skill at the same time. But I'm trying to like influence people to kind of like take both routes and then go from there. So like, you know, I mean, I've seen a lot of photographers with skill, but they don't take it to a certain level. So I'm like, okay, I'll just practice, get the skill and I'll take it to a level where I can actually document it for what it is, you know? on a higher level so I do I'll do that so it can be more realistic I mean some people are in it to like to skill it you know and come out with the best composed image some people just want to have an image of a rooftop or, or a tunnel you know some people just want to have themselves climbing up on things with a selfie stick you know it's yeah like there's so many ways to do it so it's like there's different categories of people kind of want to be able to do them all but I mean with me I'm more of a photographer I, I, I like to document the location and like kind of like you know show people that I went there but I like to give them a perspective more than like the real, but I mean, it looks like that too. Hey, what's up, how's it going? It's Victor G. Thomas, AKA Vic Invades, and you're watching Flux Air, discover what's out there. Hey.